So folks, what I have for you in this one is absolutely intriguing. And for me, and perhaps for you, the demand comes out of left field. It's not something I expected to hear. But what I have for you is a top prosecutor, someone with decades of experience, making a clear demand to have Donald Trump charged with a very serious crime. Now, of course, we've seen a lot of that. But what I have for you in this one is the particular crime being so shocking, if I'm being honest, because it's not about the white collar crimes Donald Trump has committed, whether in the political world or the corporate world. They want Donald Trump charged with something extremely violent, but I think it's 100% justified. Wait for it and we'll come back after. Former federal prosecutor Barbara McQuaid has previously laid out a potential prosecution of Trump on two charges, conspiracy to defraud the United States and obstruction of an official proceeding. Now she's raised the possibility of yet another charge, one you might not have thought about, manslaughter. She writes on Twitter, quote, I think a strong case can be made that Trump committed five counts of manslaughter on January the 6th by recklessly causing the unintended deaths of others. And she adds, quote, DOJ, you up yet? Very good question. Joining us now is Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan and now a professor at the University of Michigan Law School. Uh, Bob, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Like many legal experts, you've argued that Trump could and should face charges of conspiracy, fraud, obstruction of an official proceeding, all of the election related offenses. But now you've added five possible charges of manslaughter to that list. That's a pretty big deal. Guide us through your thought process. How would you prosecute Trump for manslaughter? Well, you know what I'll be looking for when we have the next January 6th hearing next week? The committee has said they're going to focus on this idea about what was occurring at the White House during those three hours, the 187 minutes of inaction. And it may be that the Justice Department is ultimately able to connect Trump to the intentional attack on the Capitol. But I think a manslaughter charge could be brought even if it was unintentional, even if he was not connected to the mob. Uh, you know, there's really three elements to proving a manslaughter case. One is an act or omission. The second is causation. And the third is the requisite intent. And under the Washington, D.C., District of Columbia statute, it's really just uh, undue care. So it's really a, a gross negligence standard. And so during the time that Donald Trump sat there for three hours and people urged him to do something to stop this, he didn't send in the National Guard. He didn't go on television in a uh, in the briefing room to make a statement. He didn't even tweet that they should stand down. In fact, he tweeted just the opposite about how Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what he needed to do. Yes. I think all of those things could put together the elements of a manslaughter case. Look, guys, I'm convinced. I wasn't necessarily thinking there would have been the evidence to charge Donald Trump with manslaughter. Like, on a moral basis, I could say, and I think you could say as well, look, fundamentally, he has blood on his hands for what happened on that day. The people who lost their lives and who lost their innocence and who were harmed on that day, Donald Trump carries the lion's share, not all of it, but the lion's share of the blame. But what she lays out there, what that prosecutor lays out, somebody with decades of experience in prosecution, is fundamentally Donald Trump committed manslaughter. And they're making a demand, the DOJ are you up thing, to Merrick Garland. Don't just charge him with p crimes on paper. Charge this man for causing the death of five people. Donald Trump deserves to rot away in prison for the lives that he helped take through his negligence.